Hi, and welcome to Granny's Bible Talk. It's been a while since we made a video, so y'all just bear with us. Um, my name is Sharon, and my grandkids call me Granny, and so that's why we entitled our uh, program Granny's Bible Talk. And uh, we've got a lot of things going on on our webpage. We've uh, increased it to include children's Bible stories and songs and and games and all sorts of things. You need to go in there and tune in and, and check us out. We've got Granny's TV, which has got some wholesome shows on there. But today, I'm coming to you with some, with kind of a burden on my heart about some things that I've been uh, studying and I feel like the Lord is leading me to discuss. And so, in the near future, we'll continue the things that we have on the Granny's page. We've been uh, going through the story of Jacob and we'll continue that and going on through then to Joseph. But uh, in between that, we are going to be talking about some things that's coming to America that we're seeing overseas. And uh, so I want to read you uh, something from my heart today. Persecution is coming. I feel that the Lord is urging me to teach and prepare not only myself and my family, but the family of, of God for the persecution in these last days. The persecution that Christians overseas are facing is coming to us, to the United States, and it'll be coming very soon. This is not a doomsday talk. I'm by no means a doomsday person. I'm, I'm a very happy, go-lucky person. But I feel that the church needs to be awakened for the greater move of God that's coming. You know, we're going to experience persecution, but we're also going to experience not so much a great revival as we have had in the past, what, where we go and the church gets blessed and we see a few people saved, or maybe not even back in the time when they had uh, the, uh, the Zuzu revivals. But this is going to be a different revival, and then you're going to have to be, uh, you know, prayed up and standing on the right side in order to really participate in it. Uh, we're going to see a great movement, great healing are going to be coming, and uh, more souls are going to be saved than ever before. And we're, they're seeing these things happening overseas. Even though there's great persecution over the waters in the Middle East and in, in the Asia, we're also seeing a great movement of God and lots and lots of souls are being saved for the kingdom. Um, you know, we should encourage... Uh, be encouraged by that. Be encouraged that the souls are going to be saved throughout uh, this movement of God and the, and the persecution that's coming to the church. And not be afraid, but, but just be encouraged by it. Uh, and time is short, and I believe his return is sooner than we think, and we should be watching and working until then. But I want to ask you a question. Are you ready? Uh, I've been reading some... Uh, I guess you'd say a book on martyrs, and I started questioning and sharing, are you ready? Are, could you endure the persecution that's coming, that's already abound in, in so many countries? Can you, could you possibly handle that type of persecution? You know, we as the church in the United States have gotten so petty that we, get, we think we're persecuted when uh, we're not asked to sing at church or we're not uh, included in something. Uh, we feel that's a persecution or if we feel that somebody has you know been talking about us or we don't get our way on who the preacher is or just all sorts of things like that uh, we feel that that's a persecution and that is far from what I'm talking about that's coming as persecution now the topics that I'm going to be discussing as the Lord leads is going to be some tough topics and, uh, you know, we're going to have, or that you're going to be able to have the resources to see where we're getting these materials from. Um, you know, it's not just going to be me. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it from uh, some really reliable sources, and I'm going to bring it to you, and I'm going to show you where you have documentation of these things. And it's going to take time. This is not going to be something, uh, you know, that I'm going to be able to do overnight. But uh, we are going to go through these topics. Some of them may be, uh, you know, mixed with another topic. Uh, we're just going to let the Lord lead us. Uh, the, one of the topics that we're going to discuss is how and where our brothers and sisters in Christ are being persecuted. And why. Why are they being persecuted? Uh, and what can we, as their brothers and sisters in Christ, what can we do for them? 
and how can we aid them in their time of need. And then this is a hot topic. Uh, uh, you know, it's radical Islam and the effects and the strategies to overtake and create a caliphate. Now you may say, well, that's over my head or I hear enough about that on the news or, you know, we need to know what's going on. You know, uh, it, this is going to be a very, very important in the last days. And then we're going to talk about political correctness and the LBGT and equality and the Constitution and colonialism and socialism and in the indoctrination of our children in public schools and in college. And, you know, we're going to get into some of these things and I may, I may have videos of other people discussing this. Uh, we're just going to let the Lord lead and see where we go with it. And then we're going to do a preparedness with scripture. You know, I just one that just popped in my head just now. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, when you're going to go through something, you have that scripture. That is, that is a comfort scripture. That is a preparedness scripture that says, I can, through him, I can do all things. I can do all things. That means that no matter what comes my way in the form of persecution, I'm going to be able to go through it. Uh, so we're going to do uh, preparedness scriptures. Love. You know, in Revelations, there was one of the churches that he said, you have forgot your first love. And I believe that's where we're at as a church today, is we have forgot our first love. We are going through the motions. We, we've lost that love, that excitement, that when you first got saved, the, you couldn't take the smile off your face. You know, when you fall in love with your mate, how that you get the butterflies and you get the you smile on your face and you get, you're giddy. Well, naturally you move into, you know, grown or up phases in your relationship. But you should never fall out of love. You should never get over, you know, the giddiness. And that's the way we are with the Lord, you know. We have gotten complacent. And uh, so we're going to talk about love. And then we're going to talk about the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit is another tool that will help us when we go through persecutions. And it will help you if you're, if you're praying for someone that's going through persecution. Or in, in the love scriptures uh, are the prepared scriptures. You know, that when you're praying, you can confess those scriptures and the Holy Spirit can, you know, put it on that heart of that person that's going through something. And then we're going to discuss, you know, fasting. And I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I fell in this category, you know, very much so. And uh, so, you know, I believe that I, I and, you know, you, you've got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, but I know that me personally, I need to fast. I need to start, uh, you know, seeking the Lord through fasting. And then prayer. Uh, you know, we find that uh, in the Islamic faith, they pray five times a day. That is how earnest they are about their prayer. And yet, as Christians, I'm going to ask you something, and I want you to be truthful with yourself. How many times a week do you pray? Do you even pray five times a week? Something to think about. Um, we're going to be talking about trusting God. You know, he is, he is the only thing that can get us through any, any crisis that we may uh, go through, and it's our trust in the Lord. Um, and putting off the old things, putting off the things that are offense to God, putting not off the things that are offense to the Holy Spirit. You know, we can't ask God to move in our lives if we're doing things that's unpleasing to him. And, you know, um, that he has to look away because he can't look upon sin. Uh, you know, the church, this is not in my notes, but in the church, I think one of the problems that we're facing and, and the reason we're facing the things we're facing is holiness. We have decided that, you know what, we don't have to walk in holiness. We have took some of the scriptures and twisted it around and have gotten out of walking in, in the ways of the Lord and walking in holiness. And I think that is one of the problems that we're, the reason that we're facing some of the things we're facing. And then the last thing is let's put on the armor of God. God has given us 
weapons to fight. And it's that armor that he speaks of. And um, we are truly facing a coming war. A real threat to our survival, and we must understand this. But really, we've been facing annihilation in regard to our biblical principles for quite some time now. This is a spiritual war, and we have to fight it as such. We need to be seeking God and standing strong. Now, why is our country and our Christian countries around the world uh, taking such a beating in regards to their faith? They are even facing torture for being a Christian. Countries who once was mostly Christian have now been overtaken by the Muslim faith or atheistic views. It is because the church has gone cold and the light is dim and the salt has lost its favor. Look at the scriptures. The, Jesus told us about this. He warned us about it. We have gone into idolatry. You say, oh, I'm not an idolatry. Yes, we've gotten into idolatry. Uh, the love of money. The love of things. We are so consumed by worldly goods that we have to work seven days a week, both husband and wife, in order to make, make it. Because we want more than what we need. Uh, so just think about it. Idolatry. And have fallen asleep, and we've lost our first love, as we spoke about a while ago. We want to go to a feel-good service or teaching and not be corrected. You know, I remember as a kid, you know, you went to church and yes, they preached hellfire and brimstone. A lot of preachers did. It didn't matter really what doctrine, doctrine uh, the de denomination, I mean, that you was in. Um, you would feel that when you had done something wrong that week, the Lord was correcting you. He was pulling you back into the uh, to that right path. And uh, so, you know, we don't like to be corrected. We want to go and hear all the good things and all the, how much we can be blessed if we do this and that, but we don't want to be corrected. Uh, we want to only know the children's Bible stories and a few feel-good scriptures. But this will not get you to be able to handle a knife at your child's throat when you need to denounce, when they ask you to denounce Christ. Now, you may say that that sounds outlandish or very dramatic, but that's what's happening to the Christians that are being persecuted overseas. You can say, well, it's never going to happen in the United States. Why? Are we any better than those Christians over there? No. And I, we're going to be giving scriptures about when Jesus said, you know, that he was persecuted. Are we better than our master? That's what Jesus said. Um, so no doubt we're going to be persecuted and one of the reasons is because we have let down and we have allowed things to come about and so therefore I think that one he's going to judge this nation and uh, you know I believe that we're going to fall into that of, of happening to say this is the side I'm on I'm going to pick a side and we'll get into that in a little bit um, yes you can tune me out you can turn this off. You can hide in the sand or you can say, I've heard all I want to hear about this and I don't hear any more about it. But you know what? That's not going to get you the knowledge that you need or the weapons that you need to fight this war that's coming, this spiritual war. For too long, the Christians have stayed on the milk. Paul said in Hebrews 5.12, and I'm going to read this out of the voice Bible. It says, by this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet I feel like you want me to reteach you the most basic things that God wants you to know. And I'm going to tell you this. I have went to churches, and it seems like for the last decade, they're teaching on these the basic kindergarten messages to their body of church. And they say, well, you know, we can't get into the meat because we'll lose our members. Hello? You know, they should be teaching others. We should be out, outside of the walls of the church, teaching. And instead, we want to, they want to stay. We want to stay. I want, everybody wants to stay on the milk. But he says, it is almost like you're a baby again, coddled at your mother's breast, nursing, not ready for solid food. Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I like a steak now and then. And we, I've even uh, heard that 
our bodies, after we are, um, we get through with breast milk, our bodies are not really uh, able to digest the milk products. And, uh, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> you're supposed to get on the meat, right? Um, it is sad that we have so many churches and Christians and they know so little about their Bible. You know, I, I've talked to people and they'll say, well, I don't know much about my Bible. I, I, I just, you know, I don't know. I just, I don't know much about my Bible. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering how many of us can even give the plan of salvation or give, there's another study that we're, we're going to be doing in the future is God's plan for the ages. And it's talking about eternal past to the eternal future. And I wonder if anyone or how many could even give us the plan. And yet, these other religions that are coming coming up in great numbers and over seems like overtaking countries, they know quite a bit about their religion. And uh, so it's, that's again why that the, you know you're on the milk and you're not on the meat. Uh, now we have been blindsided by the enemy, and it is time to put him on notice. So Satan, we're putting you on notice. That we are God's army, and we're not afraid to fight. You know, I think that's what a little bit of what this election has been about. And I, you know, I, whoever you vote for, that's your business. But you know, I think it's give us back some of us back our voice. You know, that I'm a Christian and I'm not afraid to fight. Now we're going to fight with the Word of God. You know, we're not going to fight with weapons of man, but weapons of God. You know, and the biggest weapon. Is love and uh, you know caring about our brothers and sisters and not be all about me what about me what about me um, I want us to go to if you have your Bible you can go to it and if not you can look it up later but Joshua in, in chapter 24 verse 15 said and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom you'll serve I'm going to ask you today, choose this moment who you're going to serve. Whether the gods of your fathers that served on the other side of the flood, or I'm going to put it to you, the gods of this world, or of the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me, and as for my house, I am going to serve the Lord. And in Joshua 6, after Joshua, you know, Joshua makes this, de uh, this declaration in 24, but way before that, in uh, Joshua 6, talks about the, uh, you know, the battle of Jericho. And I'm going to read this because I think that it uh, it's powerful for one and I just felt like the, just the spirit of the Lord on me when I read it earlier today. It says, The citizens of Jericho have barricaded themselves behind its high walls because of the Israelites' forces, and no one could get in or out. Now the eternal one told Joshua, I have given Jericho, its kings, and all its soldiers into your hands. Every day for the next six days you will march once around the city walls with all your fighting force. Seven priests will go in front of the covenant chest, each carrying a trumpet made from a ram's horn. On the seventh day, you will march around the city walls seven times, and the priests will blow their trumpets. And when they play a long final blast, then all the people will give a mighty shout. The city walls will collapse in front of you, and all the Israelites will charge in and take the city. You know, God was giving him a prophecy and says, Joshua, I'm giving you the city. Don't worry. I'm going to take care of it. But you know, Joshua wouldn't have got that battle uh, done had he not obeyed exactly what God had told him to do. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to obey what God tells us to do. So Joshua, the son of Nun, some of the priests and instructed them, Joshua, take up the chest and have seven priests, each carrying a ram's horn trumpet, march in front of the covenant chest of the eternal. Then he gave orders to the people. March around the city with the fighting men, marching ahead of the chest of the Eternal. So they all proceeded as Joshua commanded them. The fighting men led the way. The seven priests marched after them. 
blowing their horns continually in front of the covenant chest of the Eternal, and the rear guard followed behind. Joshua gave the Israelites very strict instructions. Don't yell or shout. Don't let your voice be heard until the day I tell you, and I don't want you to shout with all your might. So they circled the city once, carrying the covenant chest of the Eternal, and that night they returned to their camp. The next morning Joshua rose early. The priests carried the chest of the Eternal, and they all marched around the city exactly the same day as they had the same way as they did the day before. The armed men, seven trumpet priests, the chest of the eternal, and the rear guard, all making one complete circuit around the city with its great walls. That night they returned to their camp, and the next four days proceeded just like the first two. But on the seventh day they rose with the sun, and the procession marched around the city walls. Seven times that was the only day that made seven circuits around the city walls. After the seventh and final circuit, when the priest had raised a mighty noise on the trumpets, Joshua turned to the people. Shout! Shout! For the Eternal has given you the city. The city and all who are in it will be destroyed completely as an offering to him, except for the prostitute Rahab and those who are with her in her house. Her life will be spared as a reward for sheltering our two spies. Be sure to stay away from these things that he has that he has devoted to complete destruction so that you won't be tempted to pick something up and carry it away. Anyone who dis disobeys God in this manner will bring destruction on all of us. And the silver and the gold, the bronze and iron vessels should not be burned. Instead, they should be set aside for the eternal's treasure. The people shouted and the trumpet blasted and the noise of the voices and the trumpets rose higher and higher and the thick walls of Jericho collapsed just as God had promised. When the wall fell before them, they rushed straight ahead and took the city, killing everyone, all the men and women and children, all the cattle and livestock with their swords. Go back to the house of the prostitute and bring her out with all of those who have hidden up there so that you can keep your word. So they set off through all the destruction, found Rahab's house, and brought her and all she had, father, mother, brother, sister, and all her relatives, out of the fallen city to place outside the camp of Israel. So Jericho was destroyed completely, burned to the ground, except for the precious metals and iron and bronze vessels that were put in the treasury of the Eternal's house. But Joshua spared the life of Rahab the prostitute, all her family, all, all she had, because she was faithful to the spies he had sent, and she lived among the Israelites from that day on. When the city lay in smoke and ashes, Joshua pronounced a curse. May the Eternal curse anyone who ever rebuilds this city, this Jericho. If he lays new foundation, it will be over the grave of his firstborn. If he raises his new gates, it will be to contain the corpse of this youngest, the eternal one. He helped Joshua, and his fame spread throughout the land. You know, I was thinking as I was reading that, how many would have obeyed Joshua in this same time? Oh, like we might have went around once, but would we follow through with it on for seven days? You know, I just wonder, would we, would we have accomplished that and would we have taken the city? It's just something to think about, you know. He gave us this nation, this United States, to be able to serve him and to be a light to all other nations to spread the good news that Jesus saves. Let's take it back for him and our children. I'm going to say just to name a few things that the enemy has done and the church has allowed would be abortion. Roe versus Wade. The next thing the church has, has uh, allowed was prayer to be taken out of school. Bibles in some cases are not being able to be handed out in certain places. Marriage. Same-sex marriage has now been uh, approved by our government. And it's the law of the land. The next agenda that we're seeing uh, is the bathrooms. That sounds, you know, we go from one thing to the next, but this is true, bathrooms. Uh, the, L the LGBT needs to be comforted. And so you're going to see more and more of them pushing their agenda. And so that's, that's going to be in our topics of discussion. And hate crimes. Our bas basic doctrine is being threatened because they're going to consider 
this here, what I'm talking about, uh, saying that Jesus is the only way to salvation, that's going to be considered a hate crime. And then your rights. You know, I want you to think about all this, and like I said, in the coming days, we're going to start our videos on uh, these topics. I pray that you would uh, tune in, and uh, most of all, I pray that you would pray for me as I study and research this, that we'll be ready. God bless you, and I love you. Bye-bye.